I'm joined by The Guardian's Luke Harding, who is in Aleppo province and has been to the front line. What was the situation there, Luke? Well, what, what struck me um, is how close the um, opposition and the kind of uh, Free Syrian Army and the, the, the government positions are. Um, they were really about one and a half kilometres apart from each other. I was with the FSA in their forward post in a place called Anadan, and we sort of climbed up to the, not exactly to the roof because there were snipers, but we um, uh, climbed up um, to the sort of second story and peered out through binoculars and you could see two tanks in the afternoon haze. There was a big military base up ahead. Um, and the building itself had, had been um, had been used by the regime until a month ago when the um, Free Syrian Army kind of swept into town and drove them out. Um, uh, it was rather hilarious. It was a sort of Italian-style villa but, but these great mortars had, had, had taken chunks out of the balustrading. There was a swimming pool around the back, which had kind of um, was untouched. And um, we were sitting there talking, and the, um, uh, the revolutionaries sort of said, one of the mortars didn't explode. Would you like to see it? And I said, no. And they said, here it is. And they rolled this enormous, great Russian bell sort of shell towards me. And at that point, I kind of wandered off into the garden. <laughs> And what's the morale like amongst those members of the Free Syrian Army you were with at the moment? Well, it's a very paradoxical situation, and that's the key question. Um, if you look at this conflict, it's been going on for, for 16 months. The um, Syrian regime haven't given in. They've got, they've got tanks. Uh, they've reinforced their positions inside Aleppo. They have helicopter gunships, which you, you see above the sky, in the sky above the city every single day flying uh, missions, and, and yet the rebels are surprisingly confident. Um, they, they think they're winning. I mean, they've only got light arms, um, but we've seen in recent weeks, not only did they manage to blow up four members of Bashar al-Assad's um, military security co command in Damascus, but they've also been um, increasingly uh, effective, and what they've been doing rather cleverly is uh, targeting the army's supply chain, blowing up fuel tankers, um, blowing up trucks carrying provisions, trying to sort of degrade the army. Um, and I talked to one commander over the weekend who um, said to me, well, I said, look, how can you possibly win in these circumstances? He said, uh, the army is like a sick man. It's dying from inside. He said, he said they're getting an injection in the arm from, from Russia, but the patient is dying. And I think that's right. What you have to understand about, uh, about this revolution in Syria, this uprising, if you like, is that um, in much of the country, I wouldn't say all, and from, from most social groups, again, not all, it enjoys broad popular support from, from intellectuals. I, I met some students from Aleppo University who, who, are, who are also fighting now. They, they've, they've joined the Free Syrian Army. Uh, and, and from kind of ordinary guys, painters, decorators, and so on. I mean, they, they basically hate the regime. Um, they're not thinking about future agendas. They just want to bring Bashar al-Assad down, and, and they're, they're fighting. And my sense is that eventually they will. Um, I think not, not in, in weeks probably, but, but months. Uh, I, I really think they will prevail. And you mentioned the, the level of support from different groups. And in, in terms of the Free Syrian Army and the support they've got, has there been, have you seen sort of signs of sectarianism? I mean, that, that's another really interesting question, is this, this conflict is very much being framed as a sort of sectarian War and it's certainly true that, that Bashar al-Assad, who's who's an Alawite, basically is saying to his kind of core Alawite base uh, that this is almost like a Rwandan moment. Okay, you you have to fight with the regime um, because otherwise the Sunnis will take over and 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 and, and kill you all. And I think it's certainly true that the, the Alawi community, to a degree, has coalesced around this idea that that this has become a kind of existential struggle for them. But um, having said that, I met a fascinating uh, Alawite um, activist who, who, who joined the revolution from Latakia, which is in uh, Assad's homeland. He said, actually, in Latakia, half of the population there don't support the regime. They're against the regime. The, the, there are a lot of Alawi um, uh, uh, activists who've, who've opposed this regime and who've suffered for it. So the picture is complex. And also, I think the, the other aspect of this is, is, is very much that... that um, the Free Syrian Army is, is largely a kind of a sort of rustic, uh, almost a sort of peasant army, if you like. People from the countryside, people from the cities too, and, and middle class people as well. But 
there's certainly a, a degree, the bourgeoisie, the people who've profited from the regime, who are happy with the status quo, who don't like the fighting, uh, are not especially enamored of the revolution. So I think that the, the, the picture is delicate, but I think the, the overwhelming sense among uh, most Syrians, certainly 70 or 80 percent, is they want this regime to go. Uh, finally, Luke, the, the Syrian National Council, this so-called umbrella group, have said that they plan to have a transitional government ready within weeks. Is that, I mean, the impression from outside is that they don't necessarily have much support within Syria. I mean, what, what's the perception, your perception from inside Syria? Inside Syria, no one is really talking about kind of post-Assad scenarios. No one is talking about... Uh, what kind of you know transitional government there might, there might be? I mean, this is being done in in Washington and um, in other kind of salons. I mean, here it's just more basic. People are trying to stay alive. Uh, people are fighting, um, dying. I mean, for, I spoke to a commander who said that four Free Syrian Army um, uh, sort of volunteers were killed were, were killed on on Saturday, um, and the regime is still here. It hasn't gone. So in, in a way. From here, it feels somewhat uh, pre premature. I mean, at the moment, the, the, there's one great task, which is kind of uniting the opposition here, and that, that's to bring down the army, to bring down Bashar al-Assad. Um, and I think until, until that happens, uh, it, 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 it's sort of speculative. But having said that, a lot of people do say, we want a civil government. I mean, they're, they're really fed up with this idea that this is somehow a kind of Islamist revolution that... that they're terrorists, that the, the um, opposition here are, are linked with al-Qaeda. I mean, they said that that's just not true. It's nonsense that they want a kind of civil revolution, as they put it, and, and, and a civilian government. But what shape that government might be uh, at this point, who knows?